Welcome back, everyone. Three brackets down, one to go. Still several teams and their fans kind of biting their nails to see what's going to happen, but the wait is now over. Back to the tournament bracket show from the NCAA and its corporate champions. We are now in the lower left quadrant, the East region, where the Boilermakers of Purdue are the fourth overall number one seed for the fourth time in school history. First time since 96, the Boilermakers are a one seed. They won the Big Ten regular season title, went on to win the Big Ten tournament title. Pretty good season under Matt Painter, 29 and five overall. They will play the winner of the first four game in Dayton, Ohio on Wednesday. That game will be between Texas Southern Tigers. Coach Johnny Jones, his first losing season at Texas Southern, they still reach the NCAA tournament, winning their third straight Southwest Athletic Conference tournament title. The other opponent, FDU, out of the Northeast. FDU won four games last season, 19 and 15 overall, and the winner of that game will play Purdue. Moving on, the Memphis Tigers, second seed out of the American Athletic, 26 and 8 overall. Penny Hardaway's team upset the number one team in the nation, Houston Cougars, for the American tournament that title. That is the most dangerous eight seed in the field, folks. The Memphis Tigers, Kendrick Davis, a dynamic do-it-all point guard. They will be a problem and a tough out. And there's Florida Atlantic celebrating what they know is going to happen. They have school record with their 31 wins, 31-3 and three on the year. Second time in school history after winning a conference USA tournament title. Congratulations to the Owls. First and second round games to be played in Orlando on Thursday and Saturday. The Duke Blue Devils, the number five seed, 26 and eight on the year, won the ACC tournament title, knocking off number two seed Virginia. No team playing any better, and Jeremy Roach's return to health really is key this late season run for the Blue Devils. Out of the Summit League, their opponent will be Oral Roberts. The Golden Eagles going undefeated in Summit League play, 18 and 0 on the year. 30 and 4 on the season. They have themselves a good year. They certainly did. And they've got Max Aismith, one of the outstanding scorers in the country. Him and Roach going head to head. And Can't wait to put the seven, isolated cam on that woo, one. 7 5 transfer from Arkansas who can shoot yes. threes. Connor Hanover. Yes, sir. The fourth seed, the Tennessee Volunteers out of the SEC, 23 and 10 on the year, 11 and 7 in the conference. They make it five straight NCAA appearances. And they will meet out of the Sun Belt, the Louisiana Ragin' Cajuns. 26 and 7 on the year. They return to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2014 as they beat South Alabama in the Sun Belt Tournament Finals. Now, moving on down, first and second round games to be played in Greensboro, North Carolina on Friday and Sunday. Out of the SEC, the Kentucky Wildcats. 21 and 11 on the year. Coach John Calipari led the Wildcats to a third place finish in the SEC and 11 and 3. SEC finish. They have Oscar Shibwe. Enough said. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the Providence Friars, they'll be the opponent. Fourth team out of the Big East. Bryce wow. Hopkins, the Kentucky transfer, yeah. leads the Friars in scoring, rebounding, and double doubles. Seth, do you, what do you think about Providence? They're closer than we thought? Well, that's about where a lot of people thought, but that's one of the last bubble teams. So if you're a bubble team and you see them coming up, you're not feeling good. All right, the Kansas State Wildcats are the three seed in the East. They're picked to finish last in the Big 12. Instead, a third place finish, 11 wins in Big 12 play, led to this NCAA tournament appearance, 23 and nine overall on the season. Great first year for Jerome Tang, the head coach at Kansas State. Who do they get? Out of the big sky, they get the Bobcats of Montana State, 25 and nine on the year. They make a consecutive NCAA appearances for the first time in school history after knocking off Northern Arizona in the Big Sky Tournament. Now, first and second round games in Columbus, Ohio on Friday and Sunday. The Spartans of Michigan State, Tom Izzo, now reaching the NCAA tournament record setting 25th straight time. They finished fourth in the always tough Big Ten. They are the eighth team out of the Big Ten Conference. They will meet the Trojans of USC from the Pac-12. Trojans finished tied for second in the Pac-12 with 14 wins. And that's our last bubble team and the fourth from the Pac-12. Very respectable showing. Now. Last two slots to be filled in the East. Marquette's Golden Eagles, fifth team out of the Big East. Coach Shaka Smart, Big East Coach of the Year, leads the Golden Eagles to back-to-back -to -back NCAA tournament appearances. They were picked to finish ninth in the conference. They're a little better than that, 28-6 overall and 17-3. and three. Good, strong two-seed for the Big East champions. That's a good seed for them. And they will meet the Catamounts of Vermont. 
23 and 10. These Catamounts are a staple in the NCAA tournament. At least a share of the American East regular season title in each of the last seven seasons. They are the 15th seed in the East region. All right, let's refocus our attention to the top of this bracket. Seth. Yeah, first of all, just to be clear, that 16th seed is Texas Southern against FDU. Uh, Two very dangerous double-digit seeds here in FAU and Oral Roberts. I do like FAU to beat Memphis. I think Duke's playing too well. The upset pick here is Louisiana over yeah, Tennessee. Good call. Good call there, Tennessee Seth. overseeded because of their record, but they don't have their point guards, Kai Ziegler. Louisiana wins that game. Oof. Yeah, I like that. They've got Jordan Brown, a big guy who can get it done inside. They've got tremendous perimeter players around them, and they can put the ball in the basket. It'll be a tough matchup for Tennessee. Let's go down to the bottom of the bracket, Jay. I look at this Kentucky-Providence game. Bryce Hopkins, Providence's best player, yeah. came from Kentucky. Mm -hmm. But also, these two teams had high expectations and really had good years, but their fans are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no. But I think both of them can, one of them, the, the one that gets past this game, I think can get to the Sweet 16. Yeah, okay. and Marquette looks really strong to me. They, they're playing at such a high level. And Tyler Kolick, their point guard, has been one of the best players in the country the last month and a half. And that team is well connected, explosive, a lot of versatility offensively. Well, I tell you what, it looks like they've got a pretty good pathway to get to that next level. All right, let's.